Today, I'm continuing the conversation on tuners, and we'll show you how to use an auto tuner with the Yaesu FT891. That's coming up on the next episode of Ham Radio Q&A. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. You can show your support by hitting that like button. And also check us out on Patreon. Patrons gain access to exclusive content and an early ad-free experience to videos like this one. Help keep the mission alive. That's over on patreon.com slash kb9vbr antennas. In a recent video, I talked about how to use a manual antenna tuner. Antenna tuners, also called transmashes, matchboxes, tuning units, or antenna couplers, are devices that match the impedance from an antenna system to your transceiver. And amateur radio transceivers expect a 50 ohm impedance from the antenna, but not all antennas will deliver that impedance. That's where an antenna tuner comes in. As I said in the previous video, tuners don't actually tune your antenna. They don't change the physical characteristics or make the antenna better. Instead, they just provide the proper impedance match to the transceiver so the transceiver can operate in a more efficient manner. Manual tuners are an excellent station accessory as they are extremely versatile and allow you to use a wide variety of resident and non-resident antennas. But there are also instances where you may want the convenience of an automatic antenna tuner. I've used manual tuner with my portable HF kit, but last summer I switched to an automatic model, the LDG Z11 Pro 2 Auto Tuner. And that's the reason I did so was twofold. First, my manual tuner, the MFJ945C Travel Tuner, is getting a little long in the tooth, and the tuning knobs were getting kind of finicky. And secondly, the LDG is a little more compact, which shrinks the size of my overall kit. But that's not without its drawbacks. First of all, the LDG tuner requires power, so I needed to either put batteries in, in it or connect, my, connect it to my portable power source. Instead of installing a AA battery tray inside the tuner, I opted to use a small 9 volt battery soldered together with a power connector as its alternate power method. The other downside is that I give up a little bit in tuning range with the auto tuner. Most internal tuners will do a 3 to 1 match and an automatic external tuner will usually do about 10 to 1. A full manual tuner can usually do better than that. But in reality, out in the field, I'm either using a resonant antenna like a dipole or my Wolf River coil or a multi-band antenna that fits you know, under those, uh, those limits. If I need more, uh, impede uh, more range for impedance matching, you know, I can dig out the manual tuner for those instances. Now I'm not saying that one is better than the other because both auto and manual tuners have their place. And I stand by my previous statements that a manual tuner is a station accessory every ham should have. The Yaesu FT891 is a very popular transceiver for portable operations. It offers 100 watts of power in a very small package, but it lacks a built-in tuner. Some may find this as a deal breaker, but I really think that 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 it's an advantage as it allows you to pick and choose the appropriate external tuner for your needs. And that's what I did with the LDG Z11 Pro 2. The LDG Z11 Pro 2 is a low cost, small portable tuner that um, is ideal for mobile base or portable use. The tuner will do 125 watts sideband and about 30 watts digital. LDG calls this their zero power tuner, which means that in standby mode, it draws a negligible amount of energy. Plus, when tuning, it requires a, min a minimal amount of power, so it can be run by a source as small as a 9-volt battery. It usually finds a match very quickly, and it remembers previous matches to speed the overall tuning process. Plus, it's half the size of my old travel tuner. But configuring the tuner for the FT891 is not automatic, so there's a couple of settings in the radio that you're going you're gonna to need in order for it to work. I'll show you how to do that, but first, let's look at the tuner. The front panel of the tuner has several buttons, but noticeably absent is the power button. Like I mentioned, the tuner draws no power unless it's actually tuning, so it is always ready and waiting. Moving through the buttons from right to left, you'll see there's the tune button. You press this to activate the tuning cycle so it can find a match. 
A one second press will activate the um, memory tune where it searches previous tunes to find a match. Um, a longer press will do a full cycle tune, testing all possible matches. And a momentary press will cycle between a uh, tuned setting and an untuned setting. So you can bypass the tuner and hear the difference between an antenna match and no match. For most of your activities, the tune button is all you need. But the Z11 Pro 2 also allows you to fine tune your settings with the next four buttons, L up and L down to manually adjust the inductance and C up and C down to adjust the capacitance. I'm not gonna go through these today, but just, just so you know that the ability is there for fine tuning. And finally, the function button lets you select additional features behind the buttons. Suffice to say, as an automatic tuner, this device allows you a great amount of flexibility to find good impedance matches for a wide variety of situations. The four LEDs on the tuner give you as the status of the device. It will show you the level of SWR during transmit and tuning, and also indicate or confirm function changes when you make manual adjustments. Looking at the back, you have the, uh, the antenna and transmitter ports, and also connections for ground, radio, control, and power. But first, let's open up the unit and see how it works. Unlike the manual tuner, which has a variable capacitors and large air-wound inductor, an auto tuner consists of an array of ferrite core inductors and capacitors and relays. The processor in the tuner analyzes the SWR and intelligently cycles through the combinations of capacitance and inductance to find the proper match for your antenna. When it finds a match, it places it in memory so subsequent tunes can take less time. To use the Z11 Pro 2 Auto Tuner with your Yaesu FT891, you have two options, either with or without the control cable. The first is using the control cable offered by LDG. You can connect it between the tuner and the transmitter so the tuner can control the radio. Then when you press the tune button on the tuner, it will drop the power of the, of the FT891 put it in a constant carrier mode, and transmit. The LDG uh, YACC cable may look like a typical stereo uh, tip ring ring cable, but it is not. Uh, so you'll, you'll need their specific cable to make this work. Plug the red end of the cable into the transceiver's ALC jack. That's the one on the left closest to the USB port. And then the black end of the cable into the tuner's remote jack. Go to the FT891 menu and select item 16-15 labeled tuner select. Change the tuner type to LAMP, L-A-M-P. LAMP stands for linear amplifier and basically, you know, it's the, the tuner is using the amplifier control circuitry to control the transceiver during the tuning process. Now when you press the tune button, it'll temporarily set the radio into CW mode, lower the power and initiate the tune. That's all you need to do. If you change frequencies you know, within the band, the tuner will adjust. And if you change bands, you know, you press the tune button again to find a new match. But what if you don't have the control cable for the LDG tuner? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the Z11 Pro 2 is always sensing the SWR level and making tuning adjustments as you transmit. You can just pick a frequency and start talking, but single sideband does not present a constant carrier and tuning will be suboptimal. So instead, switch your FT891 to a constant carrier mode like AM or data, and then transmit by holding down the push to talk button on the microphone. The tuner will then do its thing. Oh, no, please note though, that since the tuner is only rated for about 30 watts for a full duty cycle mode, you should keep your data transmit power low for this activity. I usually don't run more than 30 watts on my FT891 for, for data, just for that reason alone. So I've set my HF transmit power uh, of the transceiver to 30 watts. The FT891 also allows you to set separate transmit power levels for sideband, AM, and data. As for the more advanced features of the tuner, uh, the manual is really well written, but if you wish to see them in operation, let me know. 
And there you have it, how to use the auto tuner with your ASU FT891 transceiver. Do you have any questions or comments about using an automatic antenna tuner? Well, leave them in the comments below. I'll filter through the comments and follow up with them. And who knows, you may end up on our next uh, Your Questions Answered live stream. But for more articles and information and VHF, UHF antennas for sale, please check out my website at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel draws, drives the production of future videos. Support us on Patreon to help keep the mission alive. Give us that thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if this is your first time here. That's your best way to be notified when a new video is released. That's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73.